talk given at the continuing medical education day at the indian orthopedic association annual conference held in december 2017 my brief is to talk about surgical tools for deformity correction the elizarov method and beyond it marshal mcluhan the media maven famously said we shape our tools and afterwards our tools shape us it is indeed my good fortune i have been exposed to and i have learned the elizarov techniques and use the Elizarov fixator as a tool because it is an open-ended tool which allows us to perform deformity correction in all planes as well as sustained correction over a period of time. The first generation of deformity correction started with famously with Nicholas Andre, who gave us this term orthopedics that's straightening crooked limbs in children on the left you see the picture of the tree that we use as a logo which was given by nicholas andry and the cover of the magazine in which his article appeared as translated in english in 1767. the british journal of bone and joint surgery editorial gave credence Nicholas Andre in 250 years of orthopedy. What it means is that deformity correction was done more or less by the way and from the time Nicholas Andre started it. That is, we did mostly closing wedge osteotomies. They were fixed with K wires, they were fixed with plaster casts, staples, and any possible fixation method without due regard to the mechanical axis and the implications of the deformity correction osteotomies on the joints above and below. If Archimedes told us, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum to place it, and I can move the world, G.I. Elizaro said, give me a hinge and a stable fixator, and I can correct any deformity in the world, as you can see in this picture. So, the second generation of deformity correction started with the work of G.A. Elizaro, famously, and this is the book that was produced in the English language literature in 19. He promulgated the law of tension stress and enabled us clinicians with biological principles to help us correct complex deformities and perform lengthening on limbs. This is the center that's established in Kurgan after him in Russia. He did it in Kurgan. He enabled us to do it all over the world without necessarily having very complex equipment, tools, funding, university backing, and industrial support to be able to do so. The Elizarov external fixator as shown here is the tool, especially the hinges are the ones that allow us to perform very complex deformity corrections, that too in a percutaneous manner. Then came the bright star drawer Pelly in the English speaking world who gave us the principles of deformity correction. He explained to us the rules of performing osteotomies. Here you see a deformed tibia in which the two axes coincide in the cora. The transverse bisector line works as the axis of correction of angulation. If we place the hinge at the concave cortex and resect a wedge, we get a full correction, but we also get some shortening. If we place the hinge on the convex cortex and gradually open an osteotomy performed at the ACA, there is no shortening. We can perform lengthening of the limb by placing the hinge away from the convex cortex with full correction. If we can't perform the osteotomy at the site of the deformity, we can place the hinges at the correct site and it will give us an accurate correction of the axis. We can also perform lengthening in this manner by performing the osteotomy away from the site of the cora. So, some examples of rule one correction. This is a young lady with a malunited lower end of the femur fracture. What appears as the knee is actually the malunited supracondylar fracture. The AP and the lateral X ray show procarvatum and valgus deformities. They are resolved by the graphic method of correction, which not only tell us the exact plane of the deformity, the magnitude of the deformity, but also help us to place the hinges accurately, as can be seen in the photograph on the right at the upper row 
in order to perform a percutaneous osteotomy. In the row below, you can see the osteotomy has been performed with a distraction rod in the concavity and the opening wedge correction has given her a full correction of the deformity with no translations at The rule two angulation translation is commonly used in all juxta articular deformities, especially where the osteotomy cannot be performed exactly at the cora, which is usually at the level of the growth plate. This is a young lady with a very severe bowing deformity. She's adolescent and she needs a very perfect correction, which was given to her with this upper tibial osteotomy in which we performed a focal dome and we laterally translated the distal fragment in order to correct her mechanical axis absolutely perfect. We can perform lengthening as well as correction by the root. As in this young lady who came to us with a very complex deformity of varus, internal rotation, recurvatum and shortening of the limb due to growth. We have performed a proximal femoral lengthening as well as a distal femoral osteotomy, which enables us to correct the angulation performed in a gradual manner by accurate placement of the hinges. The, the deformities are corrected sequentially and lengthening is performed to enable this young child to get a completely straight limb and almost equal lens in barely six months of treatment time. Now here is a medical student who has a growth arrest and a very significant deformity at the lower end of the tibia, a varus deformity of almost 30 degrees with some shortening. In the third photograph from the left, you can see his fixator. You can see how we have angled the motor struts. That is not only the location of the hinges, accurate placement of the hinges, but also the placement of the motor rods and the direction in which we give the forces which act around those hinges help us to accurately correct the deformities. In this particular case, we have performed a lengthening of three centimeters along with the correction of the varus. The varus correction is accompanied by a mild translation of the distal fragment medially, which enables the axis of the proximal and the distal fragment to line up. He is now a successfully practicing pediatrician with absolutely no problem in his limbs and absolutely equal leg length and a fully corrected deformity. This is a young girl who has got an opposite deformity of very significant valgus of almost 70 degrees in the lower end of the tibia and the medial border of her foot is bearing weight on the floor. In a similar but opposite manner, we have corrected a deformity through a lower end of the tibial osteotomy in which the motor rods were placed in such a way that we, that we were perpendicular to the direction of the osteotomy and the direction of the joint orientation line. We gradually performed a correction not only of her valgus but also achieved length and you can see that the proximal and distal axes have lined up and that the ankle joint is now horizontal. We can have oblique plane deformities as in the case of this young lady who has got a varus, recurvatum and internal rotation deformities along with shortening. The correction was first done for angular deformities along with lengthening towards the end of the lengthening and towards the end of the correction of the oblique plane angular deformities when the rings have become parallel we have set up a rotational device with two parallel rings in order to give her a full external rotation and you can see she has got a fully corrected deformity of both her lower limbs this is a young lad who has got a very severe This is a 12 year old lad with a very severe varus and procurvatum internal rotation deformities in both the lower limbs due to Blount's disease. Blount's disease is not common in India, but you can see the combination of obesity and the extreme deformity make this a really challenging task indeed. We were able to perform correction of his deformity first in the left leg with the help of an intra-articular osteotomy performed as an L shape to correct the depression of the medial plateau. An opening wedge L-shaped osteotomy was performed, which was fixed with two cannulated cancellous screws, a fixation with two to three half pins made from titanium was done, and hardly an inch and a half below that, we performed a focal dome osteotomy, which enabled us 
to take the distal fragment laterally as well as externally rotated in order to achieve a full correction of the lower limb. Similarly, an intraarticular plus extraarticular osteotomy was performed on the right side at a second stage within a few weeks of removal of the left side. And you can see the X ray picture showing the intraarticular correction fixed with a cancellous screw in the epiphysis as well as half pins in the upper metaphysis and an osteotopy performed just an inch below the upper one fixed with the Elizaro fixator. And here is the young lad with a full correction of his deformities, both the varus procurvatum internal rotation ones and his x-rays which show that the mechanical axis is now passing through the center of the limb. Initially, the mechanical axis was passing at more or less minus 200% very much on the inside of the knee joint. We have performed many of these intraarticular and extraarticular deformities, which are a boon, especially when you have something like a pagoda tibia or a tibial plateau, which is depressed on the inner side. And, and there is a significant mediolateral laxity at the level of the joint, as well as a metaphysial deformity. How about this 34 year old lady who's a mother of four with an uncorrected club foot deformity? We have utilized the principles of Ponsetti for correction of club feet and combined it with the power of the and modularity of the Elizaro fixator. Here you can see in the third photograph the placement of the hinges as well as the direction of the motors which enable us to correct the deformities very accurately. The sequence is used exactly as in the Ponsetti method and we have been able to first correct the supination in the foot which allows it to match the supinated hind foot then we abduct the forefoot using motors dropped off the tibial ring until the forefoot is at least 70 degrees abducted which enables the calcaneum to abduct from out from underneath the talus if we take an x-ray we will be able to find that the ap talocalcaneal angle is at least 20 degrees and when this stage is reached, the equinus deformity is corrected by angling the motors to ensure that the motor rods or the forces that we apply for equinus correction are always perpendicular to the moment arm. That is the line that joins the center of rotation of the ankle at the lateral process of the talus up to the tibial tuberosity. And you can see there is a full correction of the deformity and she can even dorsiflex her foot by 15 degrees. Now, despite the fact that the Elizaro fixator allows us to correct all these deformities, regardless of how complicated they may be, very, very effectively, the fact remains that it is indeed a little difficult process for all surgeons to master, especially the two aspects, namely that of accurate deformity analysis, number one, which in itself is difficult, and the fact that we have to frequently change the montages of the fixator by changing the hinges, the changing the position of the motor rods, etc. The labor intensiveness of the process and the need to understand a little bit of trigonometry, perform calculations, can be a little difficult for some people. Then came along John Charles Taylor, Professor of Orthopedic Surgery and Traumatology at the Campbell Clinic in Memphis, USA, who designed the TSF fixator or the Taylor Special Frame Fixator, which enables us to perform a six axis correction. It is essentially an improved Elizaro fixator with six struts instead of the classic four. These struts have got hinges at both the levels. These are multiplane hinges. And with the help of a web-based software in which we enter the deformity parameters of the patient and parameters of the sizes of the rings and struts that we are using, it enables us to perform very complex deformity corrections without having to perform the calculations or to change the montage. Here is an example of a contractor, civil contractor, who has a significant valgus recurvatum deformity along with shortening of the limb at the age of 45 he wants to get it accurately corrected to the millimeter 
and not have to suffer the consequences of the deformity in terms of arthritis in his knee joint. You can see we have applied the TSF fixata with the six struts. A corticotomy has been performed at the apex of the deformity, which has enabled us to perform lengthening, correction of the valgus, as well as correction of the procurovatum to give him absolutely equal leg length and full correction of the deformity. Here is this young gentleman who works as a fund manager in New York City who had a childhood deformity, childhood growth arrest, which led to mild varus, recurvatum, internal rotation, and a shortening of 7 centimeters in his left lower limb. His father had waited until the moment he could find confidence in techniques which enabled correction of all of these deformities. In general, we find even today, when patients go with complicated deformities to their orthopedic surgeons, the surgeon says, I will perform a correction which will correct the deformity, but I cannot correct the lengthening with any kind of certainty. Or they may say, I may be able to correct one of the components of the deformity and give a little bit of lengthening, but they are unable to offer the patient a very accurate correction and a full correction of all the deformities. So for this gentleman, we put on the TSF fixator, performed a corticotomy in the upper tibia program, enabled him to achieve correction of the varus, the recurvatum, as well as his lens. And he has absolutely equal leg lens and completely corrected lower extremity. In fact, within six months of the fixator coming off, he was on a deputation in Thailand and even learned and practiced Thai boxing and did it competitively in the ring. Here is a young lad who has chronic osteomyelitis in childhood with growth arrest. In this stage of treatment, he came to us with a very significant varus deformity at the level of the supramalleolar zone in the ankle, along with shortening, internal rotation, and a very significant anterior translation of the distal fragment equaling almost three centimeters. You can see the software config configuration for him in the spatialframe.com and you can see we have performed a corticotomy at the lower end of the tibia. Initially you can see there is a certain amount of correction of varus as well as anterior translation we have performed. And we can see how complicated the fixator looks at the level of the ankle. And we finally managed to achieve a full posterior translation of the distal fragment so that the distal tibial axis is now passing through the center of rotation of the ankle at the lateral process of the talus. Whenever we have to perform an arthrodesis of the ankle, it is far better to have the, arthro the foot translated slightly behind, which enables. Uh, easy vaulting over a stiff ankle. If you have a foot which is stiff and long, it's a great disability. In contrast, whenever we have an arthrodesis of the ankle or a triple arthrodesis or a stiff foot for any reason, even if performed surgically, it is better to posteriorly translate the foot, which helps the patient to vault over the short stiff foot. Here is another example of a young gentleman, 21 years of age, with this very significant 80 degree procurvatum deformity in the fever and about a 60 degree recurvatum deformity in the tibia along with rotation and shortening. You can see the TSF fixator has been applied to both his femur and the tibia in order to give him a full correction of his deformities. And here you can see his limbs have completely straightened out and are equal in length. So we have looked at the second and third generation of deformity correction tools, namely the Ilizaro fixator and the Taylor spatial frame. However, the fact remains that these are essentially external fixation devices. And many of the deformities that we have shown in which limb lengthening is performed can stay on the limb of the patient for as many as five or six months. In today's day and age, this amount of time may not be available to a young person who is going through his very important career 
changes that is competitive exams for starting a career or when they have just started employment they may not be able to take five or six months off that is needed for complex deformity correction hence the advent of the fourth generation of deformity correction tools which is essentially the fixator assisted internal fixation devices the fourth generation has given us reduced time of external fixation and much improved comfort to the patient along with accuracy that comes from the use of the external fixator so we marry the convenience of internal fixation with the accuracy of external fixation devices which you have just seen so coming to a few examples of fixator assisted nailing this is an adolescent young obese lady who has a genu valgum deformity with three centimeters of shortening if we were to put on the lrs or the elizaro or the tsf external fixator in her case the fixator would stay on the limb for no less than six to seven months because at her age it is not uncommon to expect 45 to 60 days per centimeter of lengthening needed therefore we chose to perform a fixator assisted nailing you can see in the x-rays on the right side we have passed in a guide wire and a thin walled reamers on top with the help of that, the osteotomy has been performed in the lower end of the femur, which shows a translation of the distal fragment laterally. A nail has been inserted from the distal portal and has been locked distally. You can see two small polar screws which are narrowing the track of the nail. The LRS fixator is on the limb. In the second photograph, you can see the very small incision and the small bandage that she needs. The lengthening is done with the help of the LRS fixator, which is rather convenient and comfortable. It allows her to lie in bed without the fixator interfering with proper sleep. It allows her to sit in a chair and flex the knees. The LRS fixator came off in hardly five to six weeks as the lengthening was achieved and immediately the nail was locked at the proximal end. She needed protection, of course, with the help of a walker or crutches for the next couple of months. But the early removal of the fixator ensured that there is no incarceration of the soft tissues and early range of knee motion was instituted with full flexion at the knee and ability to sit cross-legged. This is another young lady who is the daughter of a surgeon. And as I was told, the first female child born in that extended family for more than a hundred years. She has a growth arrest in childhood with a significant virus deformity in the femur, in the tibia, as well as shortening of the limb. The parents were very anxious that she have a very accurate correction of the deformity and no disabilities that may arise from the treatment itself. So we choose to perform a fixator assisted nailing in which we corrected the virus deformity of the distal femur here you can see there is a mild medial translation of the distal fragment uh, at the level of the supracondylar area. The nail has been locked distally and LRS fixator pins are placed behind the track of the nail. This is a picture taken at the start of the osteotomy. The x-ray on the extreme right shows that now lengthening is achieved with the help of the LRS fixator and also lengthening is achieved in the tibia along with varus correction with the ilizarfi. In this photograph, you can see that the x-ray shows the nail has been locked with three screws proximally as soon as the length is achieved. We have performed a little bit of over correction in the tibia along with lengthening and correction of the varus deformity. The leg lengths are not only equal but now made slightly longer on the right side to compensate for any future shortening that's going to occur. The fixator came off in really quick time of hardly seven weeks. As a result of which you can see not only is her deformity corrected length achieved but she has got very early range of motion within two months of the fixator removal in this manner. So while the surgery and the results are impressive and the fixators stay on for a short duration the truth of the matter is the surgeries are complicated and they need special instruments these are some of the instruments we use on the extreme left is a jig we use for a supracondylar entry in which we achieve an anatomical lateral distal femoral angle of 81 degrees 
in between are some of the thin walled reamers that are used to, to enlarge the track over the guide wire and of course we have to use straight rigid reamers and straight nails not the usual flexible reamers or the curved nails that are normally used in trauma in the femur and the tibia surgeries also take a very long time so there is much more radiation exposure to the surgeon as well as more time in the operation theater and all patients always require one to two units of blood transfusion in these surgeries however the great benefit is to the patient because as you can see in this gentleman he has got a very significant this is a very dramatic valgus deformity this 30 year old gentleman has with a significant valgus not only in the femur but also in the tibia in his case the valgus deformity was accompanied by a very significant procurvatum or anti curvation deformity in the femur so here we can see we have corrected the valgus deformity with a lateral translation of the distal fragment the intervening fragment has been fixed with these locking bolts and there is another proximal osteotomy which has been used to correct the procurvatum procurvatum deformities in the femur are responsible for giving rise to shortening and difficulties in gait and an elizaro fixator has been used for accurate correction of his valgus at the <clears throat> upper end of the tibia of course a prophylactic lateral popliteal nerve release is done when we correct these valgus deformities to such a large extent and you can see his leg has become completely straight with the mechanical axis now passing at exactly 50 percent instead of the minus 150 percent that it was passing before the surgery of course, the fixator in the femur has also come off within a few weeks, which adds to his ability to flex the knee fully after the treatment. We now come to fixator assisted plating. This is also a valuable method. In circumstances where a nailing cannot be done, say especially in the upper tibia, a fixator assisted plating is very beneficial. This is a 56 year old insurance executive with bilateral bowing deformities giving rise to pain. We needed to correct his varus deformities as well as internal rotation. He did not want to use an external fixator at all. Therefore, we performed fixator assisted plating. In this operation, we perform an upper fibular osteotomy. We put on the Elizaro fixator on the table. We may take a longitudinal incision in which we also release the patellar retinacula and we perform a focal dome osteotomy in the upper end of the tibia. This osteotomy is corrected with a mild lateral translation and external rotation of the distal fragment. We ensure good correction on the table with the help of either a cautery cord test or large cassettes and an x-ray and then we fix it with a lateral tomofix locking plate in order to give him a full correction we have an example of this young medical student who came to us from london she had a very few days and she wanted the left-sided valgus deformities to be corrected so you can see the x-rays with the significant valgus and in the center we have done the planning for her in which we have aimed to perform a focal dome osteotomy in the lower femur as well as an osteotomy in the upper third middle third junction of the tibia the fourth fifth photograph shows the tsf fixator mounted on the femur with the lateral aspect kept open due to rotation of the arcs that have been used to fix it intraoperatively and then we have performed an osteotomy of the lo lower end of the femur in which we have done a focal dome and a gently curved arc we have corrected the deformity of valgus and checked it with the help of the software plate has been inserted on the femur after a few days the similar operation was performed in the tibia with the help of a tsf fixator and a percutaneous plate was inserted you can see she has got small dressings and the deformity is fully corrected on the left side with the mechanical axis now passing at barely 53 percent instead of the minus 110 percent it was passing before surgery she is able to walk with crutches within a few days and she went back flew back to london within hardly 15 to 18 days after the surgery being performed so far we have seen the 
fourth generation of deformity correction which is with us since the last several years and i would like to leave this presentation with a with a brief glimpse to you of the future that is up going to shortly come to us with the next generation of deformity correction the fifth generation that is the fully implantable dynamic internal fixators we had the performing the world's first five surgeries using the precise hto nail in the december of the year 2014 here is a gentleman 55 years of age with a large varus deformity of the and the tibia of the mechanical axis passing at minus 10% you can see we have performed a medial opening wedge high tibial osteotomy and a short 155 mm nail has been inserted with two locking screws proximally one of which is anterior posterior and another which is medial lateral this is a special nail which is derived from the precise self lengthening nail upon close inspection you can see a drive train mechanism inside it patient uses an external remote controller in which two magnets which are accurately placed on top of the magnets that are in the nail help us to achieve the distraction of the nail this distraction of the nail is translated as an angular correction at the level of the osteotomy because the special mechanism that the nail has and as a result varus deformity gets corrected without the need of any external fixation devices at all so this represents the fifth generation or the newest frontier of deformity correction in which smart devices with mechanisms can be inserted inside the human body and without any need for external fixation devices with the help of external remote controls we can achieve slow gradual and very accurate deformities as you can see in this gentleman with his mechanical axis now passing almost through the center of the knee very much for the attention and i hope you have enjoyed this brief journey of the five generations of deformity correction as they started from the time of nicolas andri till the fifth generation that is the latest generation of deformity correction nails thank you This marks the end of this presentation.